And with that, welcome everyone to today's video. In other words, fainting in front of the team, pretty sad edition. First is Kenma for the team Nakama, obviously. And this was one of the videos most voted on on my Discord server in the channel for vote for videos. So if you want to have an influence on future videos and decisions, check out the Discord linked in the channel description. Have you ever had struggles finding good Haiki merch or anime merch in general? Because I for sure did. It can be hard. But this shop offers amazing merch. Like, I'm literally obsessed with the Haiki merch. They have the cutest hoodies ever. Now, if you want to get 10% off, click the link in the description. They offer me a collaboration, which is literally amazing. And you support my channel this way. So, win-win. Let's go. Kenma noticed the new messages on his way to training while being dragged forward by Kuro. He could barely decipher the text between the shaking of being dragged along and the tiredness hovering like a heavy weight above him, seeping into his muscles every step of the way. He got a new game and may or may not have been playing it all night. He was tempted to simply ignore the messages when something caught his attention. You could get out of training this way without getting yelled at. Now, that was a point. If he just told his coach he was too tired, he would earn himself a scolding. Not just from him, but Kura as well. And probably Yaka. But, if it wasn't his fault, if he simply fainted, they couldn't get mad at him, right? Besides, it wouldn't be the first time. He tended to get lightheaded when getting up too quickly or even after training, so he doubt they'd make a big fuss about it. He was still a little indecisive when warm-up started. Yamamoto walked up to him while stretching, pushing him down further, which earned him a tired groan from the smaller and a half-hearted glare. Come on, Kema, training's about to start. You could at least pretend to be a little motivated. Aren't you asking a little much? Can't remember the last time I saw Kemma motivated. Inoka laughed while Kemma posed like a drenched kitten being left in the rain. It was an almost miserable sight. Kenma, quit being so dramatic and stretch properly. If you don't, you're gonna be sore tomorrow. None of us want that. Kenma glared at both of them while fighting himself off the ground. Oh, he was definitely gonna do this challenge. They deserved it. With the last effort, he got up and stretched the bare minimum. Kuro came over halfway through to help him much to Kenma's dismay. He would prefer to stay close to the cool gym floor. As soon as the game started, he forgot about his plans at first. His mind automatically locked on the challenge at hand, analyzing every move of the opponent and strategizing against them simultaneously. He observed the court, the players in each of the individual positions and stats. Kuro was playing against him today, an increasingly odd feeling mixed with an unfamiliar competitiveness. He wanted to win against him. It was an unlikely goal, considering that most of his current teammates were less experienced. An effort of the coach to see how well the team functioned with the third years out of the picture. The ball fell from his fingers and his set was off by far. For a second he remained frozen in place, staring at his hands where the ball had been a few seconds prior. Confused, he blinked up at them as his mind still tried to catch up. The sudden realization hit him like a truck. This uncomfortable feeling, itching on his skin, invoked by Kuro's absence on his own team, would soon become his new normal. Rather, the comfort of being with him was out of the place. Temporary. He knew that. He had long since known it. Part of him always knew. He was too smart, too much of an overthinker not to know. He might have even known since they became friends. 
But he always thought he had time. Time, as he now realized, that was quickly draining. Like water slipping from his fingers no matter how close he pressed his hands together. He saw a glance at Koro, panting. The taller looked at him with a mixture of confusion and concern reflected on his face. He looked like he wanted to say something, but the coach called for order again, and they turned away from one another, assuming their former positions. While playing, his mind was split in two. He had always avoided the topic of Koro's graduation. The unsuspected action of the coach had him blindsided, and now he couldn't shut up the thoughts anymore. Half of his brain worked on a new flow of what-ifs while simultaneously trying to regain the state of blissful ignorance from before, while the other half focused on the game. His sets were sloppy by his standards, his strategies mediocre at best. The only thing saving them was that Koro's concentration seemed disrupted as well. As time went on, everything slowly became overwhelming. His already few and scarce energy resources he had from the little sleep, none, he had gotten were depleted within minutes and he was dragging himself over the courts, having to run more than usual since Yaku of course was on the other team. He was panting, occasionally black dots would dance in his vision and the cool floor looked all the more attractive the more time passed. The only good thing about his growing exhaustion was that it chased the thoughts from his head as even thinking became too much of a waste of energy. Slowly, his focus on the actual game returned as the rest was banished to the back of his consciousness to be dealt with another time. It didn't help much. When he stumbled and almost fell, he remembered. The challenge. The golden, cat-like eyes glanced over at Kuro. He tried to predict his reaction. It shouldn't be too bad. A deep breath. Then, as he stretched his hands up in the air to prepare another set, he started falling. Gradually, he let his body tip over and gravity pull him downward. A sharp pain ignited in his side as he collided with the floor, but he willed himself not to move. It wasn't as hard as expected. Actually, this was kind of nice. His breathing slowly calmed down as he laid on the ground, finally able to relax his tired muscles and rest. He tried blocking it all out. The sounds around him swelled into a panic whisper. His name was being called from all directions after they realized that he wouldn't get up as usual. He tried to tune it out. It was too loud, too hectic. He could only imagine what he must look like right now. Half curled up and unmoving on the ground, tired and maybe even frail, but he didn't care. By the time two arms wrapped around him, he was already content with just laying there and giving in to the exhaustion, at least for a while. Kenma. Koda's voice was soft, experienced with this kind of thing, yet, regardless, it was laced with worry. A tinge of guilt spread within Kenma's chest. Cool fingers wandered up to his forehead and down to his nose and chest to check his breathing. It tickled, and Kemma almost exposed himself. It wasn't a matter of self-control at this point. He truly felt the edges of his consciousness getting fuzzy, and part of him wanted to give into the sleep-like state of unconsciousness. What happened? Kemma, are you alright? Shut up, Liev. You know how much he hates loud noises. Yeah, yeah, we know. Sadly, this is not the first time. It's been a while, though. Oh man, I thought he was doing much better. What's wrong with him? Nothing is wrong with him. He's just prone to fainting when exhausted. That's all. Even though he tried to sound not alone, Kemma could hear the strain in the Libero's voice. It was enough. No matter how much he wished to give in to the darkness luring him in, promising sweet rest, he couldn't just yet. He carefully opened his eyes and blinked against the bright light in a futile attempt to make it less blinding, less painful to look at. Back with us, kitten. His eyes wandered up to Koros. They were warm, filled with compassion and care, and suddenly Kemma felt his throat tightening. 
He felt the urge to apologize, even though he didn't know exactly what for. Maybe for simply being the worst friend between the two of them. Because he agreed to do a stupid challenge that caused Kuro to worry. Or because he caught feelings he shouldn't have and couldn't let him go. Because he was selfish enough not to be happy for him once Kuro would leave for college. Too selfish to be excited on his behalf when he'd get a girlfriend. Perhaps even too selfish to attend his best friend's wedding one day because he couldn't bear not being the one he said his promises to. A few tears welled up in his eyes as he tried hiding his face behind the long strands of hair and against Kuro's chest. I'm sorry. What are... His head snapped up. Coach ordered them off the court to take a break, and the taller nodded, quickly assembling Kemma in his arms and carrying him to the benches off to the side. He wrapped soothing patterns into his skin, and when he saw Kemma's distressed expression, he gently kept his face and covered his ears. It's okay. Just focus on me. The golden eyes shimmered with suppressed tears as he nodded slowly. Gradually, his breathing calmed again. He sat beside Kuro, defeated. I'm sorry. It's not your fault that you fainted. Though, maybe stop playing games all night. You really gave me a heart attack. Kemal's brows furrowed slightly. I'm just kidding. That's not what I meant. Then tell me, what did you mean? He didn't look at him. The thought alone made his cheeks feel hot. I just... I'm sorry that I can't be happy for you. I tried, but... That sparked his interest. Kenma didn't need to turn around to know that the other was watching him intently. I don't think I understand. You will be in college soon. That's great for you, but it means he'll leave me alone, and I can't be happy about that. Kenma, I'd never just leave you alone. If you need me, I'll be there. I... Not forever. One day, you'll get a girlfriend, and then you'll marry her, and she'll make you happy, and... He didn't know where it all was coming from, but for the first time in his life, once he started to talk, he couldn't stop. I don't think I can do that. I should be happy for you, but I doubt that I could even attend your wedding, let alone wish you too well. But because I... I couldn't bear seeing you like that. His hands gripped around the wooden surface of the bench so hard that it hurt. Why? He tried to read what Kuro was thinking from his tone alone, still too afraid to face him, but it was futile. Because I like you. I like you, Kuro. There was a heartbeat of silence stretched between them, torn by a sudden gasp from the court. Oh my god, are you seeing this, Fukunaga? Progress! Fukunaga nodded in silent agreement. And it wasn't even Kuro, I must admit, that's a bit unexpected. It also means that you owe me 500 yen. I know Kemma can do it. You lose, Kuro! The blonde felt like he might just implode from embarrassment and hid further behind this veil of hair. Suddenly, Kuro burst out laughing. Kenma looked at him confused from between the strands of hair. Well, this wasn't how I imagined it, but I guess I've simply taken a little too long. Kenma, I don't want a girlfriend, and I'll always be there for you because I like you too. So much. Really, it would be a shame if you didn't attend my wedding, considering that I sure as hell hope you'd be the one standing by my side. Slow down, don't you think you're moving a little too fast? Shut up. I was being romantic. I'm not surprised that you don't know what that is. He tried turning his attention back to Kenma, but... I can be romantic. Asli... He bit his tongue, suddenly beat red in the face. Silence spread through the gym as though everyone held their breath for a second. 
Then the silver head leaned down to Yaku slightly in an attempt to whisper and completely oblivious to any consequences. I thought we didn't tell anyone yet. Fast, but not fast enough, Yaku covered his mouth with his hands and whisper yelled, Shut up! It's dangerous, Merck spread on Kuro's face. Oh, so it looks like Yaku senpai has a thing for us, Kohai. Shut up. What? Me? I'm just saying you're really cute together. And I said, shut up. Their banter continued and Kenma, glad about the distraction, simply let himself fall against Kuro's side, content with just tuning it all out. Thank you all so much for watching to the end. I hope you liked this first part. I hope I could fulfill your expectations for this series and tell me which ship I should do next. Well, which team. Also, leave a like because it really helps my channel grow. And consider subscribing so you won't miss out on the future part of this parts of this. And under the pinned comment, tell me what your favorite quote from this video was. I'm always so excited to see and read the ones you really liked. Yay! Also, I'm just rambling on at this point. And yeah, check out the Discord if you want to vote for videos. And now I hope you have a wonderful and amazing day!